Good morning, everyone. I met some of you today already. I'm going to repeat what I already said. We are in the inauguration. Uh, you might see things that aren't uh, perfect, but this is our this is our first try. This is our stage try. I have seen many of you uh, several times. We have known each other for quite some time now, and we have shared many experiences. And I think this is why you'll be very happy to see what we're going to do here today. And I think you're also going to be of great help to us in the development of this project. As many of you probably already know me, and they probably know what Euromind is. Euromind is a continuation of some work we started about 10 years ago. We started a platform called Tercera Cultura, Third Culture, and another one was called Humanismo Secular, Secular Humanism. And we're going to turn, uh, we'll pick up the, where we left off with both of them and continue to work. The idea behind this project is to tie science to humanities so that politicians can learn from this and create policies that are based in reason and on scientific data. Many of you have been either politicians or have been working in politics, and you probably know in the way these problems are faced in not a very good way, like immigration, nationalism, ling linguistic diversity, terrorism, even gender policies. We are firm believers that a scientific point of view can help a politician to make better decisions, decisions that are going to have an impact on the citizen's life, and also policies that are part of the 21st century, in a nutshell. In your own mind, well, in the realm of our op possibilities and opportunities, we know that sometimes it's difficult, but we are going to try to analyze reality as reality is, without prejudice, without uh, myths, without false realities. We would like to give ideas in order to defend ourselves from populism on the one hand, and, and you know that uh, sadly populism is now uh, quite popular, not only in Spain, but in the rest of Europe, but also religious fundamentalism, which is also a big threat to us. I think, and many of those who are in the room here today with us, I think that politics and policies should be looked upon from a post-ideological point of view with theory and with reliable data. In order to achieve this, Euromind is going to be based on four ideas. The first one would be the idea of the third culture. I'm going to show you pictures of representatives for these four axes that I'm going to be mentioning, these four pillars. You can see John Brogman in this picture. He is the person who created the third culture concept. He was inspired by the famous debate, uh, the Snow debate, and that took place uh, along the 50s and the last century. And he wanted a closer link between science and humanities. He's very popular in the United States, and he's accompanied by a group of scientists and researchers that is quite important, like Steven Pinker. He's uh, one of the best known in this group. And he's trying to unravel the ideas that says that humans are a uh, tabula rasa, and we come into the world to be created by society. And this is something that we still hear a lot by people in the teaching industry and sociologists. Our third pillar is scientific skepticism. Uh, 
à la Michael Shermer. Sometimes ideas find their way into society and they haven't been subject to a scientific contrast and this gives a very bad result. And this is also a way that society loses uh, some of its resources. It, it can, for example, in the health or food industry, some advancements might not be made as quickly as they could. For example, um, transgenics, the debate on transgenics, or in Spain, we have recently had some problems related to um, some preachers against the vaccination movement. And this has brought terrible consequences and illnesses that seemed eradicated ca came back in, in, in our territory in Spain. This is the third pillar. And the, th the second pillar and the third pillar would be uh, academic diversity. And f I think a good example for this, we can see Jonathan Head. He is uh, well known, he's a psychologist, and he has been very popular. He's asking that the debate is done without preconceived ideas. And uh, without taking the reason out of an argument just because the arguments might not be politically correct. For example, and it's also uh, very interesting related to the idea of university. It's very difficult to talk about gender er, or ideology for gender at a university. As soon as somebody wants to maybe introduce a nuance, it, it means automatically that these people are against feminism or against women's rights. So it's become very difficult. The fourth one would be the promote, uh, l fighting against fundamentalism. We think that the most important pillars in our society are freedom of expression, for example, or the separation between the state and the, the, the church. Um, and, the, and the rights are the same uh, regardless of gender or religion. This is one of our pillars. Secularism is a pillar for us. We think it's very important in order for different communities to be able to live together. And this is also the subject of our first event today here. I'm not sure if you remember whether uh, in, in January we, we celebrated the first um, anniversary from the massacre at Charlie Hebdo. There's been other ones, of course, and people didn't know how to react facing this terrible, terrible tragedy. And I, some people seem that they wanted to not bury the victims, but also bury uh, the freedom of expression. The, the, the people writing this comic were saying were saying to be creating hate. So we need to defend these people. They live practically hidden because liberty of expression is a very fragile principle, and fundamentalists know how to make us be quiet. They create fear and terror. Some of them are our friends. We have two images. One of them, well, sadly, there is no picture. Ibn Barak is the author of a book called uh, Why I'm Not a Muslim, but he's, he lives hidden. His image is very difficult to find. His picture is very difficult to find on the internet. But it can be done, but... And Robert Redeker, he's hidden too because he he criticized the Islamic veil in a French uh, newspaper and an Islamic group, well, called Fatwa, and he's hidden now, and he's been hidden, he's been living hiding for 15 years, and they both have participated in events that we have organized. These intellectuals, instead of garnering support, they are accused of creating hate, and when we when we do this, we are being uh, we are being collaborators of terrorism and of terrorists. I am going to present our panel today. Paul Cluter and Mariam Namazi are 
they defend humanism and secularism, a common moral and ethics. They are here, and Mariam, she has suffered herself these videos and these problems which have put her in very difficult situations. Paul Cliteur is professor for jurisprudence in the University of Leiden. He's also the, the author of books like The Secular Outlook and Moral Esperanto, which has been translated into Spanish for those of you here who don't speak Dutch. There, he's going to show how the circular rope is the best way to have people from different origins live, live together in peace. Mariam Namasi is a very brave woman here today. She's from the Council of Ex-Muslims in the UK, and she will explain that people coming from Muslim or Islamic sta or Islam states, states where Islam is the religion, they're not one homogeneous blob. There are many different people who d feel differently, and we have to give we have to give them our support. Support. With this, Paul Cliter, you have the floor. Aish. No, no, that's okay. <laughs> Thank you.